course, will remember you for your previous. And I might say that yours are tremendously interested in that uh, camp between you and Senator uh, Henry Cabot Lodge. Both of you are members of distinguished American families. And uh, that must be one of the most interesting of the senatorial races. Tonight, we'd like to have some word from you as to how your campaign is proceeding. Now, sir, have you begun uh, actively campaigning? Yes, I I've been working for a long time, nearly uh, 18 months, moving around Massachusetts. I'm a congressman, and it's a big jump from Congress to the Senate. I'm only one of four, I represent only one of 14 congressional districts in Massachusetts. And is your district in Boston? Yes, it is, and the city of Cambridge and part of Somerville, and therefore it's required a great deal of my time. Now, both of these senators in Massachusetts are now Republicans, aren't they? Yes, that's right. Senator Saltonstall and Senator Lloyd. And who was the last Democratic uh, senator? Senator uh, David Walsh, who Senator Lodge defeated in 1946, had been senator for a great many years. Now, well, as chance, I... What chance, uh, Congressman, do you think you have of reversing that situation and getting a Democrat in the Senate? Well, I guess all uh, candidates are optimistic. Uh, they're like prize fighters. I, I feel that there's a good chance. I believe that Massachusetts in the presidential year is a Democratic state. It's gone Democratic every year since 1928 when Al Smith ran by increasingly large figures. And though we do have two Republican senators, I think the trend in Massachusetts is definitely Democratic. And I believe Massachusetts will vote Democratic again this year. What are the issues which you expect to make it more Democratic? Well, I, I think that the state is naturally a Democratic state. Uh, the two Republicans have won against the trend. Uh, it's a urban area, a working area, working men and women supported in, in most part uh, the Democratic program for social legislation. And uh, for that reason, uh, uh, I believe uh, with a large turnout, which we should get this year, and when a large turnout comes out, they go Democratic. I believe, therefore, that we will end up in Democratic issue. Character of, uh, of your position. You say that uh, most of the vote in Massachusetts is a city vote, is an urban well, vote. Well, certainly the Democratic uh, vote is largely urban, and I would say that this, the majority of the city is urban. And, uh, and most of the farm people, what farm people they are, are Republicans. And the countrywide country pattern. pattern. And what is the, uh, uh, you mentioned the Al Smith uh, election a moment ago. I believe that most of the Democratic vote is said to be largely Catholic. Yes, that's right. Massachusetts vote. But it is true, and it's true also in New England, that the urban areas made up of the groups that came into the country at the turn of the century, the Irish, the Italians, and so on, both the Portuguese and so on, uh, most of them moved into the Democratic Party. They were in the lower groups economically, and politics offered them way up. And therefore, my uh, grandfather's on through. a great opportunity for them. The fact that he's a Republican and didn't like his job. <laughs> what uh, major points are you challenging Senator Well, I'm running as a Democrat. I assume Senator the Republican nominee, and I think that there is a distinct difference on issues such as housing, minimum wage, uh, labor legislation, FNCC, et etc., that the Republicans and the public housing, that the Republicans and the Democrats differ on. And I support the Democratic viewpoint on those issues, oh. not completely, nor does Senator Lodge support the Republican viewpoint on those questions completely. But in the main, I think there is a division of opinion. I believe that uh, there's been some publicity demanded or uh, requested a, a special session of Congress to deal with the price control issue. Is that correct, sir? Yes, that's right. I think that uh, the law that we passed uh, was a weak one and was made on the assumption that uh, the uh, hump in inflationary forces in the country had been reached. I don't think that's correct. And we're going to have a $12 billion deficit this year, and because of the steel strike and other reasons, there are going to be shortages and more money in the hands of the consumers, and therefore I think we're going to feel the inflationary forces heavily this year. Now, is that, uh, it wouldn't be fair to say that, uh, that you've asked for that as a political tactic, would it? Well, it might not be fair, <laughs> but uh, some people might uh, think that. Uh, uh, I've been strong for price controls and supported them heavily, and I think that, nevertheless, I think it's a bigger issue than either the success of the Democratic Party or the Republican Party. Uh, politics isn't that important, and I think that 
of both groups, and there have been Republicans who've been strong for price control. So I think that all of us have a responsibility. Do you think that there would be, uh, you, you foresee a real, a possible real hardship among your constituents uh, if you don't have this special session of Congress? Well, uh, I, I think that uh, it's a... Uh, it's going up. Uh, we're, we've reached the highest in the history the last month, and I think it's going to move up, and that does cause a hardship. And I think that uh, the law is very unsatisfactory. In Massachusetts alone, unless a majority of the people go to the polls in the primary and vote uh, for rent control, rent control will go out of uh, effect, which would mean a tremendous increase in rents in my area. So I do believe that the law is unsatisfactory, and it could be strengthened, and I'm sure that both parties would, would strengthen it. Do you feel that foreign policy will be an issue in your contest with some large? Well, not uh, to a major degree, though. I think it's difficult to know uh, exactly what... Uh, I don't know what Mr. Dulles is driving at in his criticisms of the administration's foreign policy. I think it's fair to say that Senator Lodge's record is probably stronger in support of the administration's foreign policy than mine has been. Now, what will come out of all that, uh, Mr. Levine, at this point, I don't know where the Republicans are going to go in their criticism of the, uh, at least the Eisenhower wing of the Republican Party, where they're going in their criticisms of the Democratic sp uh, Party's policy, I, I do not know. It come seems back to me they're directly involved in its execution and administration, and therefore I can't see that it would be a major issue. Uh, to come back to the local problem for a moment, sir, a number of, uh, of guests on this program have pointed out to our viewers that there's a serious condition existing in several New England states as a result of industry moving away. Are the people of Massachusetts uh, gravely concerned on that score? Yes, I, I, that is a major issue. We've taken quite a beating in textiles and shoes, and they've moved to other areas of the country. I don't think we object to seeing the South and the West develop because it helps us. But I, do f I think we do feel that in some of our major cities like Lawrence and Lowell and Bedford and Fall River, they've been tremendously hard hit. Well, now, how will that be reflected, that, that difficulty be reflected in the campaign between you and Senator Lodge? Well, I believe it's a major issue. I, I don't believe that our uh, senators have, uh, have uh, fought for the interests of Massachusetts, as the senators, for example, from the South have fought for the interests of their area, or for the senators from the Northwest have fought for the interests of their area. And I believe that one of the main jobs of a senator from the New England area is to uh, fight for the interests of New England as well as uh, fight for the interests of the entire country. New England's been left way behind in federal policies in some measure have discriminated against us in favor of other areas of the country. Well, now, just one lighter issue, uh, Mr. Kennedy. I believe it happens that uh, you are one of the uh, bachelors in Congress, and you'll be running on a ticket with Mr. Stevenson, uh, uh, who I believe uh, has, uh, his wife has divorced him. Uh, now, do you think that uh, that'll have anything to do, uh, possibly uh, adversely affect that Democratic chances in, in Massachusetts? Well, the voters might have sympathy on us but <laughs> <laughs> because of our lack of uh, companionship, so it might help. Uh, but uh, uh, I think that uh, there's no doubt that the voters like to see a large family, and it's a regret to me. G uh, Governor Stevenson's problem is well known, and he's expressed himself very clearly on it. But and there's a the source of regret to him. But seriously... Uh, you don't expect that to be a fact in the campaign, particularly... Uh, well, I have hopes for the future. Boy. I don't think that they've given up on me completely. Uh. <laughs> uh, Mr. Kennedy, uh, another factor uh, in the campaign, uh, the head of the Republican ticket is General Eisenhower, who, according to all the polls, is a pretty popular man. Uh, do you think that uh, he might carry Senator Lodge along with him? Yes, I don't think that there's any doubt that uh, General Eisenhower is certainly stronger than I would think that the, at this point the Republican Party he's, has appealed to all Americans regardless of what party they belong to. And I, I do think that the leading role that uh, Senator Lodge played in, in uh, securing General Eisenhower's nomination will be of great benefit to him. What about the fact that there seems to be a good deal of resentment among Taft Republicans in Massachusetts? Uh, you think they'll sit on their hands? Uh, well, I, I don't know. I think that most of them will probably vote for General Eisenhower. I think that they uh, are Republicans first, and they will feel that he uh, can win and should win, and therefore they will support him. Uh, Mr. Kennedy, uh, you, you've stated that you do expect to win. Now, uh, would you just sum up for our viewers in a few words why you think that you will win in Massachusetts? This fall. I think Massachusetts is a democratic state, and it's been democratic every presidential election since 28, when a large turnout comes out uh, 
the Democrats win. You might be interested in knowing, uh, Dewey, that my grandfather ran against Senator Lodge's grandfather in 1918 and was beaten by 7,000 votes. Now, that's the Senator Lodge that led the fight against the League of Nations. Yes, that's right. My grandfather was a supporter of, uh, of uh, President Wilson's, and he was defeated after a close fight. Well, we feel that uh, the times have changed and everything's going a full circle, and uh, uh, I have an opportunity to uh, redeem the cause. So I'm very optimistic about uh, the future and about the Democratic Party's prospects and about the future of my state and of New England. Well, I'm sure that our viewers will watch your race with a great deal of interest, sir, and thank you for being with us. Thank you very much. The editorial board for this edition of the Longine Chronoscope was Mr. William Bradford Huey and Mr. Hal Levine. Our distinguished guest for this evening was the Honorable John F. Kennedy, United States Representative from Massachusetts. Longines has always recognized that purchasers of Longines watches expect a certain exclusiveness. Accordingly, each year, Longines produces many hundreds of styles and models to meet every taste and preference. So when you buy a Longines watch, it's like having a watch custom made to your individual order. Each and every Longines watch is made to a single high standard of quality, the unique Longines standard that has won for Longines 10 World's Fair grand prizes, 28 gold medals, and highest honors for accuracy from the leading government observatories, making Longines, in fact, the world's most honored watch. The Longines watches, now at your jewelers, represent 86 years of fine watchmaking experience. They're unmatched for superiority of construction and beauty of appearance. And yet, do you know that you can buy and own or buy and proudly give a Longines watch for as little as seventy-one fifty. Longines, the world's most honored watch, made and guaranteed by the Longines Whitnor Watch Company since 1866, maker of watches of the highest character. We invite you to join us every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday evening at this same time for the Longines Chronoscope, a television journal of the important issues of the hour, broadcast on behalf of Longines, the world's most honored watch, and Whitnor, distinguished companion to the world-honored Longines. This is Frank Knight, reminding you that Longines and Whitnor watches are sold and serviced from coast to coast by more than 4,000 leading jewelers who proudly display this emblem, Agency for Longines Whitnor Watches. Don't miss What's My Line on the CBS television network.